let's start with the disclaimer first. Hello everyone, let's jump to the software architecture. My goal for this video is to revisit the existing diagrams that I showed you before. For example, this interface diagram and the sequence diagram. And then base it on the requirements that we created on the previous video. I will try to create the architecture which will fit. I will try to make it under some background noise. I was thinking about key elements used in the diagram and so far what I see an actor or let's say it is an user main application we have static library module we have runtime module I apologize for this naming but it means we have a static library or a shared object or runtime loading library and then we are talking about remote client so as of now I am thinking about a main application, then main application can be linked towards runtime module or static library module. And then we have this remote client module, but you can see remote client is linked towards static library module. I was wondering about the architecture and the key elements needed in this architecture. I see it as the following. Actor means a user, in our case, which is interacting with main application. Main application can load as runtime shared objects or runtime modules, or it can use TCP or UDP or something else to connect to remote clients. And then it can be linked towards static library modules and load them from the beginning. All these three modules, runtime module, remote client module and static library module they are linked to app client interface i guess that main application should link it as well we have an actor in our case it is an user actor interacts with main application main application can load runtime modules or can load on the start statically linked modules then if we support TCP, UDP protocol or any other transport, then we can use remote clients or remote modules. Aha! Uh -huh. With some updates as one of the options. So we have an actor, it is our, our user, then actor interacts with main application, then we have runtime module or a module which can be loaded in runtime. We might have remote client or remote module, which can be loaded through TCP or UDP protocol. And then we have static library or static module, which can be loaded when main application started up. Static library, or let's call it static module, remote module and runtime module, together with main application, inherit app client interface which we discussed it in the beginning in this diagram. That interface we covered a bit. But then 
in the, in the meantime. Runtime module, since it is shared object, and static library module. Both of them are including interface, which is called sensors interface. And this interface will be also versioned and also it should have two type of calls, synchronous calls when we are waiting for the return value from the function and asynchronous call when we make a request and then just waiting for some period of time in a separate thread or maybe getting a call back when the answer is ready. Based on this interface, we can create real sensors implementations or we can create our own virtual sensor. We shall check the requirements again. So client can read data from sensors. Yes. Client can send data to main server. Yes. Client and main server should use version at API. That we will do. Main server can display data. In the current implementation, we will print it on the console. Yes. Main server should have a way to interact with dashboards. That's quite interesting. Let's remember it. It is possible to control main server. Okay. Client can be run without physical sensors. We have a virtual sensor for that. It is possible to use new sensor type without changing the client's logic. We are using an interface and we will have client a sensor's logic for that. It is possible to configure the data displayed in main server. We will think about it. It is possible to store data from clients for some period of time. Mm -hmm. Main server should store data from clients in RAM. Okay. I am watching at requirements number 5, 4, 9, 10, 11 and 12. It reminds me one of the design patterns that I would like to show you. The design pattern is called model view controller. In our case, under the model, we will have interface or class which will get values from different clients and store it in the database. View can be different. For example, it can be just a console for our main application or it can be a dashboard displayed to a user. And controller is reacting on user inputs and then manipulates with model to either tune it, change it, control it, and etc. Of course, it is design pattern. It means that we will adjust an idea what will be stored in model. Of course, there is another one which is called it model view view model or as it is listed in uh, wikipedia we might have model view adapter model view presenter model view view model when we are talking about sending data towards main server we might use publish subscribe pattern in that case what will happen that uh, all our sensors will publish data in specific channels and then main server will automatically subscribe to them. User will control what data we should use and store. Then we will just unsubscribe, unsubscribe from the publisher or from the specific topic. That might be cool. For implementation for the model, we might use two different models. The first one will be RAM based and second one for the database. And then to be able to instantiate the correct model, we can use the factory method pattern, for example. Oh yeah, right. So there is the definition, an idea that we will create an interface related to the model. And then we will have two inherited classes or subclasses, one for the RAM and second one for the database. When we want to instantiate one of these uh, subclasses, we will use a factory method to create that and return it back. That should be interesting to use. So then we can use some of the design patterns to construct an architecture which should be quite easy to expand, easy to control, have uh, separate areas of the responsibilities.
mm, short note from the left side, the interface for sensors. I try to display here an interface and also important notes. Of course, it is a planning action, so probably some changes will be needed, especially some adjustments. And of course, during the implementation, we will face some issues that we will need to redesign or maybe do some adjustments, but I really hope to keep it as much as possible original. So that's why the designing part takes some time. As you might see here, we have two type of sensors as I said before we have virtual sensor and real sensors there is no information there is no documentation about real sensors so I might find acquire one or I will just go purely with virtual sensor we will see but I will try to make code as close as possible to real sensors as well an idea that so when we implement a module it can be a static library a runtime library runtime loaded library it might be a remote client the main logic will be implemented in a way that we read a specification file which should be either json javascript object notation or yaml file both of them are supporting schema validation it means that we can write schema with for example specific parameters and range of the parameters and then we can validate input files towards that schemas that we have. In that case, if we are expecting that some specific parameter should have string value and user provided digital value or just a number, then the file will not pass him validation and we are kind of safe. It is one of the ways how to write the first level filtering of data. And uh, an idea that we start a module and we specify a file to read as a specification then we parse it and we get an object of a class specification with two methods so far it is sensor type and call type under sensor type we will have two types so far it is either virtual sensor or real sensor and then we will have call type under call type i mean either synchronous call when we make a function call and we are waiting for the return value kind of and waiting when all nested functions will be called as well a synchronous call in that case we will just specify a callback and we make a function call and once data is ready then we will call a callback function so that's why we have a callback function specification as a int report data i wrote here std variant because we are using c plus plus standard 17 and then we have an interface i sensor we have abstract methods such as init restart the init because sometimes to and establish a connection towards a sensor, we will need to have some kind of initialization function or initialization steps. Then if we get some sensor stuck or something similar and we will receive um, a command from main server that we need to restart it or something similar, then we will have restart function. For the graceful disconnection, etc., we should, of course, have the initialization function. To get data from sensor, we will have get data. It is for synchronous call. And we will provide a pointer to std variant. We will see. I was thinking first to have a return type std variant for the function but then i realized that we don't have any error handling and probably we will replace integer value with some enum or some enumeration probably to indicate type of error that we have to be able to report it to a user but so far it is just integer values to keep it a bit simpler otherwise we will get overwhelmed with the architecture requirements structure and uh, we will not start this project so i think that we can start at least with something and then improve it we will spend some time on planning figuring out what should be done in a what specific way 
but in the same time we should not aim for the absolute best solution ever otherwise we will never start it because there is always some corner case scenario that it's almost impossible to cover or have two options which are excluding each other and etc anyway so that's an interface for sensors so that area that we have on the left side it will be implemented on the module talking about first implementation related to the static libraries for example it can be done we can always mock functions or maybe return hard-coded values so far it is not good idea i know but at least it is one way forward because we just need to get some data sending so once we get at least something working then we will improve it and we will fix it and etc otherwise it is quite easy to lose focus and uh, start doing other things then we have application client interface so that's a communication between interface on the left interface from sensors and an application and also i have added here outgoing communication that's for the displaying values i think that it is good to think about it right now and also maybe introduce some design patterns here so we can use it by the way there is one design pattern used already and it is sensors factory it's not purely written yet because uh, we will see how can we adjust this pattern to our knees so it will suit our code better let's continue One small note, I have renamed it in a different way. So we will have architecture for client side, architecture for application side, incoming data storage. I will change it to just data storage and then view. As I said before, the way how can we display data it is either remote dashboard for example or maybe some other remote stuff and then we have a console by introducing some tips right now just to have it as it is it will help us to design our architecture and also think how can we structure it in an abstract way or in other words if we are planning to build a house, it is nice to think about possible doors, possible windows, so we can design an architecture, so we can design our floor plan, uh, where the internal walls should be placed, where we should have a kitchen, the bathroom, bedroom, because in that case, we should also think about the water pipes, not for 100%, but at least to have it in our mind while we are designing it. So I will, I will continue on it. I got stuck a little bit uh, thinking about the client side and the main application side or main server side. 
I see here the interface I sensor in the center. I was wondering about two type of data. The first one is when we pull data or we periodically checks if data is available and then after some interval we reading data and then this function get data will be used or will be called. Then we have another type of the sensor which is asynchronous type so it means that we can provide a callback and then when data is ready then the callback will be called so before writing codes and testing and see how it will go and etc i tried to simulate in my head an option for example i can understand or i can imagine the virtual sensor real sensor with both types for example read the register every time on the get data and then do some transformations blah 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 bam, when we get a value then there is another type of sensor for example when we should wait for or some specific register to set it up and then in that case we will have a loop which will check for the register and once one of the registers or flags is set to one or high it doesn't matter then we read register data do transformation and again we call a callback that's i can imagine but then the way how to send this data or publish data i see here that we have main logic which is kind of creating an instance of needed sensor and then send data or publish data. And I guess that we should need to have here kind of abstraction layer or can I say a design pattern publisher subscriber or it can be also producer consumer no probably publisher subscriber when each instance of client will have main logic it should encapsulate different type of sensors and call types and just publish an information uh, so i think that what we will do we will introduce here publisher and subscriber design pattern. Each component will use publisher type to create a topic. In the case of topic, I will mean sensor name. And then inside that topic, we will have different. Well, shall we consider that one sensor is providing different values or not? That's a good question. Let's simplify it so far that sensor can provide only one data and then in case if we have for example some modern sensor which includes a few different subsensors inside or can report different data for example temperature and humidity from one place you just need to set specific flag to read data or maybe read some register in that case we will just instantiate two sensors no one limit us to create a several sensors from one specification by the way but then we would have a publisher per sensor so we might have some sensor id for example as a publisher id yeah but then the question is uh, assume that we have publisher and subscriber then how shall we proceed with main server main application because we were talking about three different type of modules uh, statically linked uh, libraries then runtime loaded libraries and remote clients we will have client registry which should have a functionality to load or instantiate clients from statically linked libraries runtime modulus and later on remote clients in the main application we will have subscriber where we will search for publishers and subscribe for them yes and then subscriber will use controller to put data into data storage and immediately update view that new data has come so we will have data storage as a model so once model is updated controller should update the view but then we should think about the single responsibility there is kind of mnemonic acronym five design principles which we should think about so single responsibility principle open closed principle list of substitution principle interface segregation principle and dependent inversion principle. I am thinking about the single responsibility principle. 
if we take it into consideration, then our controller will have not one responsibility, but two to not only manipulate with data storage, but also manipulate with view. Yeah, that's quite a tricky question. I like to create these kind of riddles and then sit and trying to figure it out. One of the problems with this approach, it is quite difficult to curse myself. From one of the disadvantages of this approach is that sometimes I want to curse myself. So later on, I need to pay for some sessions to, to sit with a psycholog and talk about it. Another problem is that quite often psycholog doesn't understand my problems. <laughs> I think we will introduce publisher and subscriber design pattern here, maybe with some adaptations. To make it relatively simple, we will introduce in controller class additional functionality. So it will be not so it will be not a single responsibility class, but maybe complex. An idea that I controller will receive data from subscriber class and then put it into data storage and update view accordingly or notify the view that data is updated. Okay, now it's time to revisit a little bit the spider web here. And um, we were talking, I was talking, uh, sorry, I will, I will jump between we were talking, I was talking, I was doing, we were doing, because I just want to get this feeling that we are sitting together and struggling with it. And the difference between you and me that you can scroll a little bit in the future and then take a look at the result and say how badly is it or maybe how good is it and etc. Let's revisit again the architecture for client side or for the modulus that we are talking about. So the good thing is uh, I haven't changed the callback function, virtual sensor implementation, real sensor in the implementation. So I sensor still have these uh, implementations. That's good. What has been added on the client side? I have introduced an interface I publisher on the top right corner. This publisher interface has so far two functions that I see or four C uh, create topic. Topic is explained here. Someone stole topic. Ah, here is the topic. A small guy. As I said before, we have iSensor interface, which provides virtual methods. And then we have a 
subclasses, real sensor implementation, virtual sensor implementation, and then sensors factory will instantiate an object of one of these subclasses based on the specification provided to it. There is the main logic, which might be a class, might be just a function, we will see, which reads this specification and based on this specification will call a sensors factory. I have introduced here the interface which is called iPublisher, an idea that each module will inherit iPublisher class, maybe it will be a separate class, we will see, and then for each of the value that sensor can provide, we will create a separate topic. Topic so far will contain just two important fields. It is the name of the topic and value type. Because when we want to receive data from the sensor, basically we should know what is the name of the sensor or how we would like to call it and then what value it can provide. And then once it is done, probably we will have some kind of topic ID. That's a good point, let me add it. When we inherit the interface iPublisher, every time when we receive a data or we were call it from callback function, then we will call the function publish in topic, where we will provide the topic or maybe topic ID, let's check, and then the data that we want to publish. The idea in the main application slash main server site, we will have publish subscriber service when our our publisher will publish some data to topic. Publish subscriber service should go through subscribers. So this service, let me go through. We will not change I publisher class as such, but we will call two functions, create topic to get, I got again some kind of a mental simulation. Main logic will create an instance of I publisher and probably register it in publish subscriber server. Let's add it here. Uh, some small changes. It is iterative process. We have our main logic and main logic will create iPublisher class. Main logic is creating publisher class instance and then for every value that virtual sensor can provide, we create a topic with name and value type. Then we call publish in topic every time when we receive it new data. We have on the application side, this part is a bit tricky, that this part I need to think about. We should have relatively simple logic in the client side, so it should be kind of straightforward implementation for the new sensor, because in case if we need to introduce a new sensor, it is already some headache. But from the client side, it should be relatively easy. Adding new type of sensor will give us already some headache so accept that part which is related to the real sensor or some new type of the sensor we should have relatively stable logic separated from it but we have a bit headache related to the application area or main server area let me explain the idea of the publish subscriber service. We have a list of publishers. So in our case, publishers are modulus. One module is one publisher. If we have a several data coming from sensor, then we have several topics, but it is one publisher. We have subscribers. In our case, it can be just an instance of a callback. Let me think about it. But so far, let's imagine that subscriber is just a callback or something similar. An idea that we are registering publishers if needed, then we get list of the topics. By the way, I should add it here. We get a method uh, list topics to get the list of the available topics from the publishers. An idea that we Let's keep this note here to think about. So we have a published subscriber service and an idea that every time when client is calling the function publishing topic, then all subscribers should be called it. The problem is 
that we should avoid kind of circular dependency. So it means if publish subscriber service is handling publishers, then publishers should not have an access to publish subscriber service. In other words, we should have downstream communication, but not upstream communication, if I can say so. An idea that we will inherit iPublisher interface and then publish subscribe service can provide this interface towards modulus. And then when we will create a new topic, then publish subscribe service will react on it as an implementation of the interface and will create an entry in the map. Once we got a new value from publishing topic, then we get this value, go through the map of the subscribers. Once a client has sent data towards a main server by calling publishing topic, we take this data, go through the map, find the list of the subscribers for that specific topic and notify each subscriber of the new data. Of course, one of the biggest questions so far is in case if we have hundreds of remote clients, then we get this pressure slash loading on publish subscriber service one object. For our example that we have right now, let's keep it as it is. Later on, we can use a different frameworks or different tools for that. I'm thinking about, for example, Apache Kafka as an option. Ah, yeah, right. We might have RabbitMQ. So we are looking for message broker. When we have publisher, when we have a consumer. I was thinking about one of the message brokers and one of the examples from VMware. <laughs> who, who knew, right? I was thinking to get some other uh, website, but uh, virtual machines knows better this part. So we have publish subscribe messaging and then one of the options as a message broker for this case might be Apache Kafka or RabbitMQ. Let's assume that so far we have a message broker implemented in publish subscriber service. It will be heavily loaded class, yes, but it is our example. We will see where we do have a lack of uh, performance or where do we have any problems and then we will redesign it because as I said before we have an iterative process we have kind of suggestions we have our planning part right now we are trying to predict as much as possible and utilize as much as possible tools right now to make it smooth and not overwhelming but in the same time we should have a balance between too much thing design it and we spend uh, many years designing a perfect application or shall we implement a garbage within a couple days be ready on market and then suffer from the low quality. I think that we will stop here. We will continue with the publish subscriber service here as it is. So we will have a message broker inside. It will be not exactly a message broker. Probably it will be just the simplest logic ever so far, just to get it an experiment and see how bad is it. Once we discover a problem, then we will redesign it and then we will think about it and replanning the work. Except the publish subscriber service, I have added here data storage and view. So when subscriber get data on the specific topic, it means that subscribers knows the type of the data. Then we can call controller and notify controller that data storage can be updated. And then controller should update data storage with new data come from subscriber and also update the view. So in our case, if we are using RAM based data storage, so that's great. We will just save it maybe in some circular buffer. If we have database, that's even better. We can just save it on the database and uh, that's it. And related to the view, we can have remote dashboard or any other service that we would like to use, or we can use a console output for printing data. I was wondering about client registry. Client registry is responsible to load different modules that we have, then load or reload runtime modules and also do the same for remote modules. And to make it maybe a bit easier, I was thinking 
looking to use kind of singleton pattern. Singleton pattern means that we are creating an object of a class on the beginning or when it is necessary, but we don't have any other copies of that object. We have only one. Usually it has a private constructor and have only one static method to get an instance of that class. I decided to borrow kind of an idea of Java. Unfortunately, there is no dependency injection as I would like to use like we have in Java. So what I think to do is to create a class which is called singleton application context. And then inside this class, we will have an instance of singleton application context because it is a singleton and then client registry, publisher, subscriber service. And then our main application server or our main app will instantiate the singleton. And once libraries are loaded, then we will call the singleton pattern to get, for example, client registry and then register modulus. I was thinking about the interface that I was creating in the draw IO and plant UML videos. And I think that it is not needed. I was thinking about the interface that I was designing in the draw IO and plant UML videos. I'm not sure that that approach will be so comfortable as I would like to. I think that we will go with publisher subscriber service and also will use std variant type because I think that it is already available on this C++ 17 so should be fine for us. So std variant plus our topic with value type I think it will be enumeration maybe should cover the problem with types. We will think about it a little bit later. So far, I see it in this way. Of course, uh, I will try to think about it in the background and maybe redesign it again. But so far, it looks quite promising, I guess. I got a problem with uh, one of the objects. Uh, one of our starting points or our main function in application area, it is our main server part. It links all static libraries. Then we have main application server. It is our entry point. On the entry point, our main application is initializing a singleton application context object, which is creating singleton application context, client registry, publisher, subscriber server. Then client registry should call functions such as load static modulus, runtime modulus, remote modulus. Inside each of these functions, we are calling the functions from statically linked libraries then load runtime modulus that we discover on specific path and then we call there an entry point to load them and then if we have remote modulus connected <laughs> it's time to think <laughs> I think it's time to utilize my brain. Load remote modulus. How can we load remote modulus if they should be connected to a main application? Right, because client is initializing a connection. So it is a bit stupid for us to load remote modulus. No, wait, wait. I got it. I got it. Uh, I just uh, got uh, some uh, self-conversation uh, and uh, I was arguing with myself. <laughs> it's a bit ridiculous, but anyway. So client registry is handling only registration 
of clients. So it means load static modules. We know modules which are linked to an application on the compilation time. So then we can basically go through and call this main logic function to get entry point here. Load runtime modules means we are calling functions from runtime modules. All right, another problem. When we are registering our modules, <laughs> yes, you are correct. Uh, client registry is not able to load modules or call specific functions. We should provide functions to either register a module or unregister a module. And then inside these functions, we will call entry points in that given module. That's correct. That's, that's a good point. Let me update it. Now it makes sense. And again, and again, and again, and again. Hehehe. He. Now, now it makes sense. I have modified it just a little bit. An idea. Still, we have client side, so our main logic will be kind of main function, or we can create a class, it doesn't matter. As said before, our client side is still use the same thing. So we have main logic. The main logic contains the code to load specification based on the specification call sensors factory provided it and then get sensors. And then, uh, then we have iPublisher. When we get a data from a sensor, we call publisher publishing topic and we are sending data basically. Then related to the application part. So let me increase it. We have have client registry. Client registry will have functions to register static modules, runtime modules, remote modules, and also unregister them. And it should have list of uh, modules pointers. This interface that we will inherit will have module ID, just random data, maybe some U, UID or QID generated universal identificator. And also entry point function. An entry point is this main logic that we have. So once we register static module, then client registry should call us in a separate thread, for example. And then this entry point will call it in a separate thread. And then this entry point will create an instance, blah, 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 and everything should be fine. Then once a separate thread created, we have our own main logic running and etc. We get some data, we publish it, it. So once we created the logic, created a topic, wait, once we created a topic, <laughs> Publisher subscriber service. Right, we create a publisher. That's correct. We create a publisher and we register it in the publish service or service. Then we get topic. It does make sense because publish service or service is ah makes sense. Makes sense. We have no publishers but only subscribers. But then we have here like get publisher. Now I have updated it. So our publish subscriber service, as I said before, it inherits iPublisher 
interface and it will have an implementation for create topic and publishing topic for example create topic was called then we update the map for topic that we have a new one once we call it publishing topic we specify topic id and new data we just go through this map find the necessary topic and for each of the subscribers we call the function on new data and we provide new data our singleton application context will create client registry client registry will be available through this application context every module it doesn't matter what is it a static library runtime loaded library or it is remote client we should call client registry and then registry our module then our i subscriber interface is probably inherited by i controller or we will create a class which is called controller or subscriber controller or controlled subscriber we will see what is ugliest way to name it and we will name it in that way so we take a class which inherit subscriber and controller and then once new data has come then we update data storage which can be either ram or database and we update i view that new data has come sounds simple eh yeah let me think about it but so far i'm quite satisfied what we have got so far it looks quite promising maybe there are some issues related to the remote modulus but let me think about it and then i will create new stuff i just realized that to be able to store data in data storage we should know the value type and list of the values we should figure out the list of methods for interface i data storage and probably i view and also i controller yeah because we have a subscriber we have a controller it is technically possible to get data specific value here so let's try to figure it out it So assume that we have an interface i data storage. We will add here a method add topic, which should have here. It is just a method, and then based on the class, we can figure it out what it should be. For example, we have a data storage, and once subscriber get new topic then we call the function add topic so it will create an entry in the map and then once new data come then we will add value in topic for a given topic specific value and then we will update list of values for the specific topic and it is for the ram for the database it is unknown so far because we need to figure it out what type of the database we need to use or we want to use we don't know the structure yet we don't know the table it so let's just keep it as it is as a placeholder and also you might notice it that in the interface i data storage i don't have any fields so far just methods because they are virtual functions or virtual class methods and then in the class ram then i added map field so far i was thinking about i view that's also would be nice to have i need to think about the methods here one of the questions that i come up here while i was designing it shall we have kind of time stamp when data has come from a sensor and if so shall we use timestamp generated from sensor somewhere here when we get the data or shall we use a subscriber when we receive the data from one point of view we can say once data come to the subscriber or to our main application then the, this the data or timestamp when we got data but in terms of the remote client for example then it doesn't matter when we receive data because we might 
wait up to for example one minute or maybe there is a really bad connection so they're trying to reconnect 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 and then boom we will get batch of the data then we will receive batch of values and uh, if we will set a timestamp on the main application then it, it doesn't make sense it will be nice to have a timestamp on the client side so once we receive data then we do this timestamp but in that case we would need to create here a kind of a structure for the value that we have so for example then it would have topic id and then value and timestamp but it will add complexity for our structure. It is the time when the game of the balance step in. We don't know, shall we spend time to design more detailed structure, which might help us beforehand. So we will figure it out the architecture and then we will save our time within implementation. Or shall we take a risk and firstly implement it to see what is missing and then base it on a kind of proof of concept, then judge the architecture? That's a good question. That's uh, one of the questions that usually most of the developers should face, I would say, because I still think that each developer should have at least some knowledge on the architecture, on the design patterns, to know these moments when we should apply and which design pattern when we should don't use them at all when we should use anti-pattern as a singleton for example and etc for now let's keep it simple uh, one second there is one principle or acronym kiss keep it simple stupid it is not exactly a good way forward keep it short and simple keep it short and sweet I like it. Keep it sweet and simple. I like this more. Let's go back to our architecture. Since it is our kind of pet project, so I will show you one of the ways how to design it and etc. We will use principle keys. Keep it simple and sweet. If we face no, when we face a problem, then we will revisit an architecture and then we will try to judge or maybe estimate what we can tune a little bit. Let's keep the client side uh, as it is right now because it is already with some complexity added. Then our application area. I would say that there are some things that I would like to change maybe a little bit later. Uh, now the question is uh, related to the interface view. Let me check what we can do here. Purum purum pum. Okay, um, another kind of thing to think about. <laughs> another thing to consider. Assume that our main application is running in two different instances. First instance is using remote dashboard. In other words, we are running an application and sending data to some web page. And then we have console on another instance when we can just take a look at the console and see the output data. Shall we integrate into interface view control on the modulus that we have so shall we control the list of the modulus via interface i view or shall we keep it separately that's a good question because from one perspective we are applying here mvc so model view controller and controller is controlling the model according to the view and configuration from the user from the view so to make it a bit simpler let's keep it as it is so i I think that it is our first version of the architecture. It is a little bit drafty. <laughs> it is in a draft state, of course. But let's try to implement the code or, sorry, our homework for the architecture is kind of done. We have a draft version. We have kind of sketchy state. We will save it as it is because as you can see, we have at some places some questions and it is kind of fine. I will say it is already somehow detailed for us. So it makes sense at some point. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions related to it and I will try to either explain it or maybe find a nice excuse why it is written like that. Uh, let's try to make a short recap. 
each of the modules that we have. So it might be a static library linked to a main application. It might be a runtime library, which will be loaded when main application is running, or it can be a remote client connecting to the main application via TCP, UDP, or any other protocol. It has kind of entry point function, and this entry point it is inherit the interface i module and providing unique module id it might be just unique identificator it might be some reasonable name it might be whatever we want and then it provides an entry point function entry point functions is the main logic specified for that client this main logic is reading the specification from the any yeah a parameter that we're specifying or we will define it and specification is a separate file it should have the type json or yaml file because then we will later on add schema for validation and then it might have one two or several configurations for one sensor assume that we have some complex or some multifunctional sensor which can provide a several type of data but in the uh, same way then we can adjust our code a little bit later for that specific sensor type so we can write in the specification what data we want to achieve and by what ways and then based on the specification we will read this data once we constructed an object from the specification then we use sensors factory to create an object of a class for real sensor or for virtual sensor implementation and both of them are implementing i sensor interface so sensor factory is constructing an object of one of these classes but will return an interface it means that if we are changing something in the classes for example it will not take i sensor interface and we're kind of safe and if you ask question why we are using interfaces and classes for example because in c plus plus and in many other classes inheritance is a relatively cheap operation to call the right function from the right class c plus plus or introduces so-called virtual table so they have kind of pointers to a functions so once we call for, for example a function init from i sensor interface the c++ knows that one of the classes is implementing these functions it just has a pointer to implementation many other languages they're using some kind of virtual table a functionality or approach when compiler creates a specific table for an implementation of that function and then base it on the type of the class it calls necessary function but we can take a look at it in a separate video because it's quite interesting stuff to, to talk about sensors factory creates an object of i sensor interface or sensors factory creates an object of a class of real sensor implementation or virtual sensor implementation but returns a type i sensor and i apologize that there is no asterisk type it is typo from my side and also i still wondering what type shall we use shall we use unique pointer or shall we use shared pointer it will be definitely a smart pointer but i will try to think about it in spare time to figure it out what is the best suitable type of the smart pointer will be here for you a small homework would be to figure it out the difference between unique pointer and shared pointer if you are on the c++ if you are in any other languages then we can consider that we are creating here a reference for an object then our application area i think that one of the questions that you can come up with is the what is the flow uh, what is the sequence of calls here and i understand it it will be probably the main application server that is our main function and then most of the stuff will be implemented in classes so we are creating a singleton application context within the singleton we initialize necessary object of the client register registry and publish subscriber service probably one of these classes will be run in a separate thread if needed then client registry for example will call for each of the i modules interfaces the specific uh, entry point to start clients i will try to figure it out and write it in the code but so far assume that we somehow register modules there is the question about the entry points for the runtime 
time loaded modules and remote modules, I guess. And for the static uh, libraries. One of the questions here would be related to the different type of modules when they are registering themselves. Because if we're talking about runtime or remote clients related to the client registry, when we are talking about static libraries, I was uh, thinking about it uh, for maybe one hour or so. Uh, not like sitting right now, but uh, thinking about it in the background. Client registry will be modified by us and we will call entry points for statically linked libraries. These libraries we know on the compilation phases. They will be included conditionally, of course. We will try to figure it out how to automate it, maybe by using CMake file generations. And it is only one exception. Then we have runtime loaded modules and runtime loaded modules would be a little bit different, but similar to remote modules. Both of them should be loaded into a memory, right? So once we loaded them, we search for entry point of that specific runtime module or remote module and then we will call that entry point and then probably in the entry point we will provide application context or necessary proxies for that and then we are resolving a problem for the static libraries we will call them yeah we will call all of them i apologize for these messy thoughts but once we come up with some code then i hope that we will see what is actually happening and then uh, probably we will get this aha moment i think that that is quite a long video so you can kind of catch the flow of my thoughts and ideas and then maybe it will help you a little bit to get this feeling of uh, designing uh, what questions you can ask you for example yourself while you are designing it or maybe the way how you are kind of simulating it through in your mind before you writing a code so for example uh -huh, if I create an object of that class but then how can I communicate with object of that class shall we have any connection it's kind of good thing to design an architecture and then simulate in your mind how would you interact with these instances for example before creating it one of my experiences was it was a bit sad experience to be honest is that i designed it i just read the book of uh, gang of war this amazing book so the book is called design patterns elements of reusable object oriented software in the internet it is well known by the book of gang of war so this book contains i would say still valid design patterns applied in the software development especially related to the c++ for example in java or in any other object-oriented programming language i would say that some of these principles might be outdated and uh, let's say this solid uh, principle come up a bit a bit newer i would say some of the design patterns can be outdated and probably not used by modern languages. My story, I just bought this book and I have read it, I think, within three days. And then I was reading it again and again and again for maybe a couple months. And then I got a task to develop a small application which will do some computations, let's call it like that. And I was crazy. I would say I was so searching for a situation to apply one of the design patterns. So in the end of the day, I had around maybe 50 classes in total, but I had no idea how they are communicating with each other. So if we come back to the diagram, I did something similar. So I created a bunch of the classes and uh, each of them were interconnected with each other and etc. One of my senior colleagues who was a mentor for me, who was a teacher for me, I would say who was a real teacher, he asked me, are you sure that you know what you're doing? Maybe you would like to do some kind of form of simulation or maybe modeling what you're doing. And I said, nah, that's fine. I know what I'm doing. And then I started to write a code because I was so excited that I have created almost amazing structure. I had just maybe one or two questions. And then after three weeks, I have written around 30 classes and I was sitting absolutely lost. 
because I had no idea, I had no clue how it should work. <laughs> Ridiculous. But right now I'm laughing. At that time I was kind of crying because I was really sad that my idea doesn't work. I am really bad developer. But then my teacher came to me and said that when you are utilizing one of the design patterns, think about it first, how you are going to utilize it. And do you see a need for that design pattern? Maybe you just need to restructure a little bit your code. Maybe you implement something wrong in the previous step. So there are so many things to consider, of course. If I remember correctly, he also suggested me, and then I come up to it also as well, that firstly, it is good to write it on a paper or, for example, on the plant UML. And then if I feel that something is strange here or I feel some doubt about the interaction between two or three classes, for example. Create a sequential diagram. On the sequence diagram, it is quite easy to see dependencies of the classes, which one goes first or which one should go first. And then if you see a conflict, figure it out the problem and try to fix it before you write a code. Let's imagine that we are creating an architecture not for the small project that we are doing right now, but something bigger. For example, for 100 microservices. For example, kind of new architecture for Netflix V2 or Netflix second edition. They are using hundreds and hundreds of microservices as far as I heard. It is really easy to get lost in the architecture and just imagine that uh, we create we generated an architecture and it looks quite nice but then it turns out that it doesn't work. I will create probably a sequence diagram as well to see is there any problems. I want to spend some time here thinking about the architecture because quite often development task or can I say writing a code should be a relatively short task when you just take an architecture, you take a sequence diagram or any other diagrams, get into the context of a task and then basically writing down. So yes, sequence diagram is the next step. I am not sure that it will be detailed too much. I will try to show on the sequence diagram the key elements or key interactions between components. For example, when we are loading a module or when we are getting new value and etc. how it should look. So I will try to create a sequence diagram to be able to kind of simulate in my head how it could be. Is there a any conflicting scenarios so let's go to into it Okay, let's try to take a look at it. So we have our happy user, we have main application, we have singleton application context, client registry, publish subscriber service, i console RAM controller. I will choose the proper names once we start to write the code. So far I'm trying to refer to the diagrams that we have with classes. Then RAM data storage, console view. Then we have these entities like statically linked client entry point, runtime loaded client entry point and remote client. An idea that we have here a couple groups, for example, application starts, then we have starting statically linked modulus and then runtime link modulus. So when application starts, of course, when we start an application, we have a separate thread. In terms of the desktop application, usually it is called main or GUI thread. 
like graphical user interface thread. It's one of the options. So let's keep it as it is. So we have main thread. Uh, automatically, main application usually loads libraries into RAM memory, which were statically linked to the application. And here I added a comment that statically linked modules should have a code injections into main application to be declared in client registry on compilation phase. We can achieve it by generating a header before compilation starts. I was thinking about our chain of calls between client registry and uh, statically linked modules. Usually, a library doesn't have so-called active entry point. It has passive entry point or it has just set of functions to be called. It makes sense and it means that to be able to know from the main application perspective what functions shall we call and also to avoid a situation when we have, for example, two, three, five static libraries and they have the same function names to avoid this name conflict. We can introduce different namespaces, of course, that's what we will probably do. And also we can introduce a header that we will include in the main application. And this header will be generated by build system tool, for example, the CMake. Each of the module will just add its own part of this uh, header file, that which we will call. And we can discuss this uh, variance a little bit later. Which means if we link zero static library in the main application, we will have empty list of modules. If we build, for example, two static libraries with some small changes, uh, really small changes, I really hope, we should get two entries in the generated uh, header. And if we have, for example, 100 static libraries, then we will have 100 entries in a header file. It will be probably some simple command, for example, register, blah, 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 or maybe some namespace with a function and then it, is, it will be added as, or maybe some macros will be called so we will figure it out eventually it is our investigation task but it should be quite interesting to solve if we make this generation on the compilation phase then we will kind of discover logical issues during the compilation time but not in the runtime that's a good thing that's kind of safe once all libraries are loaded it means that we already know the entry points and we know information about this model in the client registry. It should be changed a little bit here. But then we have singleton application context. This context will create client registry and publish subscriber service. And also a little bit later, we are creating a controller and controller can create data storage and console view. So it can be done in the main function or it can be done within the console RAM controller. We can tune it. So that's a part of the starting application. Then we have start our statically linked modules. In this case, once we initialize our application, then we we call the client registry object and then we call probably some kind of method. Here I have a thing that we will need to add here a new changes. So in the client registry that we had, I will probably jump between two pictures. We will need to add some functions, for example, run entry point in a thread, and then we will create a separate, a few threads to run in a parallel. Here we have a to do, it's to add the map, like module ID and std thread where this entry point is running. So we will run them in the parallel in a separate threads, but we will have a control over them. Once we start an entry point, so our library has started, we should read the specification and uh, to avoid kind of confusion here, specification file can be specified as a parameter during the compilation time. We can use, for example, define or const expr. It can be a parameter for building with default values. We will figure it out how to do that. That will be also quite interesting stuff because we will need to pay attention for the working directory. Because what could happen that application could be deployed somewhere and specification can be in a different folder. So we should pay attention where is located an application, where is located a specification file and where do we run an application. A bit tricky but interesting. Once we read a specification, we will need also to find a good library which will read JSON or YAML formats. Then we 
create sensors based on the specification through sensors factory initialize sensor objects i will fix it a little bit then we create a topic we are publisher so we call create topic to publish subscriber service once we created a topic then we basically start in a loop when we receive new data once we receive it through for example periodic calling uh, get data or we just put a call back and we do something then we do publish in topic call and then publisher will go through list of the subscribers for that specific topic and inform that the new data is coming so it will inform controller probably and then controller will add new value to ram data storage and will update the view and for the user interface for the console we will probably use a library i i need to check what library will be more suitable for us to get more control more flexible way to display display data and maybe just update some part of the UI instead of the rewriting the whole text and etc. It will provide more control elements to user. So we can use not just one console line, but maybe some arrows like buttons and we will see. And then it will be running in the loop. Then let's assume that we have runtime loaded modules. In this case, user clicks or will choose, for example, load runtime modules from the menu. Then our UI should react on it and click or send a command to the I console RAM controller that hey we would like to load runtime modules and it should be not a controller to be honest it should be main application or maybe client registry so single application context client registry publish subscriber service these three guys uh, it's the first iteration so we will load runtime modules we will find firstly all libraries with some wield card so it means that they should have some prefix for example and some suffix so we will know that we are loading correct libraries and not just random one place it in the folder once we found them we load them into memory the important moment we just load them into memory then we resolve an address of a plugin function in the runtime module because usually it means that we have loaded into a memory and we don't know the address of a function to be called and once we will know the address of the function we can call it and resolve some data so we will need to add here a function which will return a structure probably with module id and entry point function and then we can put it into the list with our modules and call correct entry point function which we will do for the separate thread and uh, here I have added also some comment that specification file should be a compilation time parameter can be defined as a define or const express and then we do basically the same we read specification pay attention for the file path for the specification file create a sensors initialize sensors object then create topics and then we will print some data I wanted to show you one of the draft variants so this is can I do it like this oh, oh, oh yes so this is draft version probably it is version one of the diagram as you can see here i have some typos i have some arrows uh, which are pointing to the wrong component yet i just wanted to show you also the flow of the designing kit and flow of my thoughts maybe questions some ideas to check i will also do another version maybe a little bit more polish it if i can say so or maybe refine it and then uh, of course i show you just wanted to show you kind of intermediate stages as well instead of just boom show you a picture of uh, everything is done because to be honest it is a bit um, iterative process so it is it takes some time to be honest I'm recording this video several days you can see this uh, some jumpings between cadres because it means that I'm continuing the work with some updated ideas that's a, a normal process that's absolutely fine when we have planning for phase when we have investigation phase it takes time it is better to sit some time in calm atmosphere and think before rushing things write everything and then uh, uh, struggle with bad architecture and complain about some issues but also it is a good thing to not 
overseed, if I can say so. Just got good enough architecture to discuss. Unfortunately, I don't have uh, a codec sitting nearby, which can look at this diagram and suggest me something what I can change. But it is uh, one of the prices, let's say, working alone. So if you have codecs, I'm begging you, once you get some architecture, even shaky maybe sketchy some questions are there you haven't solved them show your diagram show your architecture show your draft solution to them if they are asking too many questions or they are asking or suggesting too many things you can say wait 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 let me finish first but right now take a look at the diagram and tell me what might go wrong what is wrong with the architecture the point to show a diagram to a colleague even if it is not ready yet it's to make sure that there is no huge obvious mistakes that we have forgotten or we accidentally made that's important once you get a task, for example, that you need to develop a new functionality, new feature, new component, new whatever, and it is big enough, it's not just one working day, let's say. Please make sure that you understand the task, you understand what should be done, prepare at least some draft architecture. It can be not that detailed as other diagrams, but most importantly, that all of you kind of aware what will be implemented and how. So I will continue to polish this diagram, but so far it looks quite promising and previous diagram that I showed you before, this uh, suggested diagram looks quite promising with some questions, with some to-dos, but quite, I would say, good enough to be able to create epics and fill in our backlog with some investigation task and implementation task. But I have added a really small fixes, but uh, as I said before, we will probably stop here and uh, we will take a look at it. Once we start to investigate or implement the code, what I see that I will need to update slightly the diagram with the classes. So we will probably jump into it and I will update it as well. According to the changes that we have made or we have discovered, one thing related to the modulus is that's what I see. First of all, I think that interface I module should be moved to the client side because it is implemented by module. And also we were discussing to remove functions, register static module and unregister static module. Or shall we keep it? We don't need register static, maybe we need it. I have an idea what to do. Uh, one moment. I have updated a little bit, just slightly. Firstly, I have added here a predefined static modulus. It is not an enumeration, but it will be a generated header with entries containing module ID as a key and module entry point as a value. We will figure it out how to fill in it. It might be also just a structure, it might be a map. Map is a bit easier because in case if uh, there is a conflict between module ID then uh, the key will be replaced. We can figure it out. It, it is as just a suggestion. I have added here interface i plugin. It is not exactly an interface in our terms so it is not a class but it will be just a function get module info which will return an instance of iModule. 
this instance will provide module ID and entry point. Why we are doing it, you might ask, because we already have module ID and entry point. By using this approach, we are able to add a little bit later different versions, either by different namespaces or just changing the name. For example, if we introduce another version of the module ID with more advanced functions, etc., we can just add a new function, get module info v2, and then we will resolve that function instead. And it is needed for the runtime loaded or remote clients. In that case, we will call firstly one function, get module info, and then everything else we will kind of extract from that function because we should have one entry point. We should have one function to get into the library or into the client. We have entry point and entry point should be not exactly entry point, but maybe a main function. So I confuse it everyone here. I confuse it you, I confuse it me, I confuse it my customer, I confuse it my investor uh, and etc. I'm I'm joking. According to the design, it looks a little bit tricky, but let me try to explain it. Static libraries will define only iModule interface. It is not exactly even an interface, but just a class. But we can we can think that it is an interface. Then we have module ID. It can be just a unique number or maybe a name. Probably it will be just a name like as the string. It is a bit easier. Then we have entry point. It is a function to enter kind of the main logic of a client. As I said before, to be able to get functions called from the static libraries, we will have here a generated header file with map entries which will contain module id and module entry point function i understand that right now it looks a bit difficult and it looks a little bit overwhelming in that case we used to write proof of concept or we can start with just a small really small functionality first and then expand it so don't think that uh, we will need from the first day implement uh, these uh, 30 classes no 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 we will just write a small main application just to print a message hello then we will change it to create an object for example then to create another object and do something else so slowly 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 and of course the implementation will take place incrementally one iteration by another so firstly we will implement a small main application just to print a message then we will add maybe some visual system just to get it because then we will get immediately a feedback kind of then we implement probably client registry even with one function that's enough then we will add static library with one client and it will be virtual sensor I see a lot of red flags to start immediately create a bunch of the classes and then get frustrated that nothing is working. And that's why I would prefer to start with baby steps kind of approach. We will write a small application, then we will add one of the classes, then we will replace a small part of the code with another class, and then it will help us to implement this architecture and not get overwhelmed. Again, it is one of the ways how to implement the code. Uh, of course, there are different people, different approaches. We all are different. And of course, in the end of the day, the result does matter, not a way how to achieve that result. Please let me know in the comments what do you think about my motivational speeches. I am actively working on them, but sometimes I feel that I am getting down <laughs> instead of up. All right, I will fix some more stuff. I just realized that one thing, that we have an interface I subscriber with two functions, subscribe to topic and then the function on new data. And then we have publish subscriber service with map of topic and list of the subscribers. When I created this interface, I was thinking that it is a good idea, but we don't need the function subscribe to topic 
because it is done by publish subscriber service. And in that case, we can remove subscribe to topic function and keep only on new data. And then on new data will be a callback for new data com. And then our controller can have multiply lambda functions or multiply reactions on it. I have right. Uh, the question was about the topic, like the topic, the type of data, right? We can modify it we can modify we can remove subscribe to topic function but on the on new data we will provide topic and data makes sense makes sense and then we will have one on the one reaction on it and then controller can check for example base it on the topic we can do blah 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 makes sense it, so far one of the things let me change it So I have changed it and now it makes sense. It more makes sense. So publish subscriber service will have list of the subscribers or in our case, list of the callbacks on new data, how to react on it. And I controller can have this logic. We can discuss where it is, where it should be. Maybe we will create uh, some other class, but no, let's keep it not that complicated, right? Keep it short, sweet, sweet, short switch keep it simple short publish subscriber service will have map of subscribers slash callbacks per each topic once data has come from a client then we call the function or callback on new data when in provide topic and sd variant and we can extract this data from this map then controller will provide a callback or implementation for that function on new data and will update storage with new value and will update the view when new data has come. Now it makes sense. In the client registry, one moment. client registry i have added here a map which will store module id and threads so we can run separately each module in a separate thread and of course we will have a control on every thread if needed i think we will keep register static module and uh, unregister static module because our enumeration will have this map and then client registry can access it and once we want to register these modules they will follow the same procedure as a runtime module or remote module so we can extract the common logic across three functions into one that may, it will be a bit easier when you are designing something it is good to see the similarities in the logic and then if possible extract as much as possible logic parts into one function so you will have kind of one common function and few wrappers around which are providing the correct data for example it will be a bit easier to maintain instead of the duplicating logic and then changing it less mistakes can be made and introduced by that For the console class, we will use a library to show complex console UI. Why are we using library and console UI in the modern era instead of the using some graphical user interface? For this project exactly, it is made for two reasons. First one, it opens up a possibility to write code in, in VSL. Windows subsystem Linux and we don't need to think about forwarding a graphical user interface somehow towards Windows. Second, main application server or main application service can be run on services, can be run in Docker, can be run in cloud and there is no need for us to have a graphical user interface and displaying some data because quite often you just connect by remote shell to that specific cloud instance then run some commands or maybe restarting it and then get some values uh, needed from the application and then you go back 95 percent of the time you don't need any graphical user interface uh, it's not to offend others but let's uh, think about the ecology and if possible don't try Throw away your code that you have written. You can reuse it a little bit later. 
don't delete your source files keep it maybe a little bit later you can somehow process it and then recycle <laughs> never mind we will use a console to save some resources of course to use less dependencies needed for the application and uh, it feels a little bit classic when you open a remote shell run application get some console view do some st cool stuff and then exit you just get a little bit this classic feeling i think it is good enough uh, for continuation we have two diagrams i will try to attach these uh, two generated diagrams as well so you can then load and then go through and of course uh, please let me know in the comments what do you think about it and what you would like to change maybe so we can discuss it of course otherwise we have already some requirements written based on the requirements we have created two diagrams with classes and some dependencies and also a sequence uh, diagram based on these classes i think that now we are ready to fill in our backlog with epics we will split some work into the different stages based on our work breakdown structure and after that we will plan our work in Jira, what we should start to do first and what our expectations etc. So next step is work with Jira. Thank you for your time. Thank you for watching this video. Hope to see you in the next video. Have a lovely day. Bye.